Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we'll be reviewing the Reborn Diplodocus Carnegie Stargazer. Now, there are two variants of this model. The first is a male nicknamed Stargazer, and the other is a female nicknamed Catch the Rainbow. While both have a very similar brown coloration, I chose Stargazer because the red spot on his head made it look distinct from the very similar looking Eofauna Diplodocus. So when Rebor uh, first revealed that they were making a Diplodocus, I really didn't think much of it because around the same time, Eofauna revealed their Diplodocus. But over time, as Rebor started showing more images of, you know, the unpainted figure and then the finished product, it really started to grow on me and I liked it more than the Eofauna figure. So let's take a quick look at the packaging as always. On the top left, you've got the name of the dinosaur, its nickname, and the scale it's in. In the middle, you've got this wonderful looking skeletal, and on the bottom right, the Rebor logo. On the back, you've got all of other all of Rebor's other dinosaurs, and you've got four empty spaces on the bottom right. Uh, these empty spaces likely belong to Rebor's upcoming Giganotosaurus and Spinosaurus figures. So let's waste no time and see what this new sauropod has to offer. This neat little fat card is also included, pause if you want to read it. Now Reboard themselves confirmed on their Facebook that if the packaging has a skeletal on the front, then the figure will come with a, um, a fat card. So here is Stargazer in all of his glory, and oh my goodness, this thing is so stunning. It's very sizable, and of course, very, very long. Just look at the length of that tail. We've got to do some size measurements right now. Thankfully, I found another tape measure in my garage. So first, let's do some height. At the shoulders, this Diplodocus is about 4 and 3 quarter inches tall. And at the head, he's about 5 and a half inches tall. And of course, for the length. Oh boy, this is going to be insane. From head to tail, this Diplodocus measures 32 inches long. So, in real life, Diplodocus Carnegie was estimated to be around 82 feet in length, so this model would fit in the 130 scale range. Though if you want to pretend that this is the larger species, Diplodocus Hallorum, then it would fit nicely in that 135 scale range. Starting off with the wonderful head sculpt, you can see that it has the typical Diplodocid head shape that's small and flat around the snout area. And you can see a seam on the lower jaw, but there, there is no jaw articulation on this. And going down the neck, I could talk about this detailing all day, it is so well done. You can see all of those horizontal lines, as well as the tiny crispy looking scales. And then of course, there's the row of spikes that starts at the back of the head and goes all the way down the tail. And on the side of the neck, uh, there's the smaller osteoderms. And then going down to the torso, the scales are slightly more visible. And you could also make out the skin folds and all of the musculature. Down to the arms, there's the one claw, which is more accurate than the, um, than the elephantine feet that sauropods were once thought to have had. And then there's the three claws on the hind legs. Moving down to the underbelly, it's very similar to the detailing on the upper part of the body. And down the extremely long whip-like tail, the detailing is very similar to the detailing on the head and neck. Moving on to the coloration, the primary color is this dark gold. The underbelly is slightly lighter. And for the striping on the top, it consists of a very faded white and dark brown. And of course on the head, you've got the red spot which helps distinguish Stargazer from Catch the Rainbow. I am very impressed with this coloration. It looks appealing and it looks like a coloration that the actual animal would have had in real life. The main feature of this sauropod figure is the bendy wire in its neck and tail. It allows you to put this in a multitude of poses. Now I'm going to put it into my favorite pose, which is this, with the head facing left and the tail moving to the right. It looks like this sauropod is taking a nice stroll through the forests of late Jurassic North America. And the rubber material used for this seems to be the same as the rubber rebore used for the tails of their theropod dinosaurs. 
And I think that's a good thing because it does feel very durable and unlike a Reborn's Titanoboa. And I still love that Titanoboa, don't get me wrong, but as cool as it is, it's just that the paint degraded quite easily and the wire broke on some people, including me. It's just a shame that it wasn't as durable as Reborn claimed it was. Starting off with our comparisons, here is the Eofauna Diplodocus, which is just puny in comparison. Now since this one is by Eofauna, this is the most accurate Diplodocus model on the market. I heard that there may be some scientific inaccuracies with the Reborn figure. Some people have mentioned the posture of the neck and the texturing of the skin, but regardless of the inaccuracies, I still like the Reborn figure a lot more than the Eofauna one. The size and detailing is just impressive, especially with that bendy wire neck and tail. Next, here's the Safari LTD Diplodocus, still one of my favorites from this company. And here's the Safari Carnegie Collection Diplodocus from 2008, and you can clearly see that Stargazer dwarfs them all. Up next, we have the spectacular Apatosaurus from How Long Good, and these two scale very well with each other. 2023 has been a great year for sauropod fans. We've got three large sauropod models, uh, which is of course this Diplodocus, this Apatosaurus, and the very tall Ruyangosaurus from Collecte. Let's bring in some other large sauropod figures. Starting off with the Safari LTD Amargosaurus, the 2012 Carnegie Brachiosaurus, the Collecte Deluxe Mamanchisaurus, and the Eofauna Atlasaurus. Let's bring in some smaller sauropod figures. So here we have the Safari LTD Shunasaurus, Nigrosaurus, Malawisaurus, and Patago Titan. Let's get these out of the way. And here is the Collecte Brontosaurus and Bahadosaurus. And one more small sauropod. Here is the How Long Good or GR Toys Dicreosaurus. Right here, we've got a group shot of the Morris Information dinosaurs. So here we have Allosaurus, Stegosaurus, Camarasaurus, Brachiosaurus, Apatosaurus, Diplodocus. Ceratosaurus, Torvosaurus, and Sorophaganax. Of course, we gotta bring in other Rebor products, starting off with the Vastatosaurus Rex, and the Disney Carnotaurus. Here is the Sorophaganax, Tyrannosaurus Rex Kiss, and still my all-time favorite Rebor product, the Dinosuchus. Last but not least, here is the Titanoboa and the Crocodile Victim. Let's bring in the Beast of the Mesozoic 135 scale T-Rex. If you're gonna pretend that this is Diplodocus Howlerum, then these two will scale very nicely with each other. Last but not least, here is the Diplodocus next to the Collecte Zyphactinus and the Collecte Mini Zyphactinus. Well, there you have it everyone. That was my review on the Reborn Diplodocus Stargazer. Overall, this is such a fantastic, high quality model. The size, the detailing, the paint job, and of course, the bendy wire are all phenomenal. So I'm going to give this an easy 10 out of 10. One of my all time favorite Reborn products, and it's a huge contender for one of my all time favorite sauropod figures alongside the How Long Good Apatosaurus. So if you want one for yourself, you can get it off of Big Bad Toy Store or Everything Dinosaur. I purchased mine off of Everything Dinosaur. So if you guys enjoyed this review, leave a comment down below, hit that like and subscribe button, it really supports my channel. And I will see you all in the next video.